Hello and welcome to Grammar Video 1, Parts of Speech. So you should be on this grammar video if you were going into your sophomore year of high school at Bishop Matchbuff. Okay, so just a couple of notes before I begin my, the first grammar video. So this grammar video, these grammar videos that you're going to be watching over the summer, they're not, to be, they're not meant to be incredibly detailed or thorough. They're not meant to be a thorough explanation of the grammar concepts. Rather, the grammar videos you're watching, they're meant to give you a brief review of stuff we worked on during freshman year. Okay, so these grammar videos are assuming that you remember somewhat, that you somewhat remember what we've talked about in grammar freshman year. Now, if for whatever reason you have completely forgotten everything I taught you about grammar during freshman year, or you didn't have me as a teacher because you're a transfer student and you need a more thorough explanation of these grammar concepts, or if you have a lot of questions, please, please, please feel free to email me with your questions. And if you need a more thorough explanation, I'm happy to provide that to you as well. But otherwise, again, these videos are going to be very brief, mainly because they're meant to review stuff that you should already know. Okay, so let's talk about grammar video one. Okay, grammar video one, we're just going to review basic parts of speech. All right, basic parts of speech. All right, first part of speech we're going to review is a noun. So a noun is a person, place, person, place, or thing, or an idea. Okay, there are many different types of nouns I can go into. However, I'm only concerned if you can, I'm only concerned if you can distinguish what a proper noun is. So I don't really care if you can tell me what kind of noun it is, except when it's a proper noun. So a proper noun is a specific name given to the person, place, or thing. So an example would be something like Jennifer, which is a name of a person, or um, Denver, which is a name of a place. So if it is a proper noun, I do want you to write proper noun. Otherwise, you don't have to label what kind of noun it is. Okay, next on our list of parts of speech is a verb. Okay, so a verb describes an action or a state of being. So it either describes an action So it either describes an action, so that's where you have your action verbs, or a state of being. Okay, so let's go through that very quickly. So action verbs refer to a specific action. So action verbs refer to a specific action. Example, examples are like walks, or talks, or hops, and so forth, okay? Whereas a linking verb, a linking verb connects the subject, so connects a noun, with an adjective or a noun that describes it. So a linking verb literally connects the subject with a noun or adjective that describes it. Okay, examples include am or are, or is, okay? So linking verb, it's basically connecting two things together. Now what a lot of you guys got confused about this year is the difference between a linking verb and a helping verb, okay? Okay, so whereas a linking verb is connecting two things together, a helping verb is used together with an action verb 
that helps to express that action. So it's used with an action verb. Used with an action verb in order to express that action. Okay, so the helping verbs will come before the action verb. So an example would be something like had been walking. Okay, my main verb in that, my main verb in this is going to be walking. So walking is my main verb. So my action, my helping verbs help to extend the meaning of my main verb. So walking is my main verb. So the verbs that come before walking, had and been, had and been, because it's extending my the meaning of walking, it's and it's used together with my main verb, walking, had been will be my helping verbs. So yes, you can have more than one helping verb in a sentence. All right, so let's just review verbs very quickly. So action verbs refers to a specific action. With a linking verb, you're connecting the subject with a noun or adjective that describes it. And with a helping verb, it's used, helping verbs are used with an action verb in order, or the main verb in order to express that action. So helping verbs extend the meaning of the main verbs. So what you want to do is you want, so the last verb in the sentence is usually going to be your main verb. So what you want to do is identify your main verb first. So my main verb here is walking. It's my last verb. And the verbs that come before it will be my helping verbs. Okay? You will not have, you will not have a linking verb right before an action verb. If you have any verbs before an action verb, you have helping verbs. All right? So again, if you have more than one verb in a sentence, identify your main verb first. Okay, so I identify my main verb. All right. The verbs that become before my action verb will be my helping verbs. All right. They're not linking verbs. These are helping verbs. Whereas with a linking verb, you're connecting your subject with a noun or adjective that describes it. Helping verbs are going to be used with the action verb in order to extend that meaning. All right. So... Moving on. Okay. Next we next on the list of parts of speech you have adjectives. Okay? Adjectives modify or describe nouns. So adjectives describe nouns. So if it describes a noun, it is an adjective. Adverbs are also describers. Adverbs describe verbs, adjectives, and other adverbs. Okay, so basically, if you have a word that's describing something that's not a noun, you have an adverb. So let's look at our describers again. Adjectives describes nouns. Adverbs describe things that are not nouns, such as verbs, adjectives, and other adverbs. All right, next you have pronouns. Okay, so pronouns are used instead of a noun to avoid repeating the noun. So a pronoun takes the place of a noun. So examples include he, she, it, nobody, they, and so forth. All right. Okay, another another type of part of speech that we want to go through is conjunctions. Okay, and conjunctions join words or phrases together. So joins words, phrases, or clauses together. Okay, there are many different types of conjunctions, but 
I'm only going to talk to you about two types of conjunctions. Okay, so one type of conjunction is a coordinating conjunction. Okay, so coordinating conjunction includes and, but, or, yet, nor, and so. Okay, these are example. These are coordinating conjunctions. So, as far as this goes, I do want you to specify whether it's a coordinating conjunction or not, because recognizing coordinating conjunctions will be important when you start talking about clauses. So, with a coordinating conjunction, if you remember from last year, coordinating conjunction joins independent clauses together. with a comma. All right. Now, I another type of conjunction that's important to know about is the subordinating conjunction. So if you remember, subordinating conjunctions begin dependent clauses. They begin dependent clauses. So I do want you to know the difference between these types of conjunctions because when you get to clauses and complex and compound sentences, these will be a lot more important. So subordinate conjunctions include although, because, before, if, when, while, and so forth. There are plenty more, but you can always Google a list of subordinated conjunctions if you want to see a comprehensive list. But these are the most common subordinated conjunctions. So with these so subordinated con conjunctions, remember, they begin dependent clauses. All right. Okay, so we still have other parts of speech to talk about, but this camera is almost out of battery. So, um, the continue so you, this is this is going to be grammar video part one, and grammar video part grammar video one part two is going to be up right. It's going to be next right after this. Okay, so this video is not complete yet, but there is a part two to this video. God bless you and have a good evening.